Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a first look at a suspect San Antonio police say is accused of killing one person outside a private social club. Just ahead, the charges he's facing and how SAPD was able to track him down. And following an apartment building collapse in Iowa, five people remain unaccounted for. Up next, how rescue teams plan to search for the people who still may be inside. Beautiful night, uh, a bit on the humid side, but uh, a moonlit night. Don't be surprised if you see some fog in a few spots. I saw some on my way in this morning. 68 degrees out at San Antonio International. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Wednesday. It's the last day of the month. It's the 31st. Yeah, May 31st. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a good week so far. Uh, looking forward to, I guess, you know, another nice weekend. I like the 80s. That's right. I, I heard rumors about a chance of rain this weekend, and Mike Osterage is here to clear some things up. Yeah, we do have rain chances coming back into the picture, especially latter part of the weekend and first part of next week. But in the meantime, we are yeah, enjoying beautiful, beautiful clear skies out there this morning. It is gorgeous. And yes, fog already very, very thick fog up there around New Braunfels. That's the only spot in the metropolitan area reporting anything, but there may be spots in low lying areas in your neighborhood. So just be on the lookout and it will continue to, you know, kind of go back and forth. Uh, visibilities will go up and down as the morning rolls on 70 here in town. So we are at our normal low temperature right now. 63 Bernie stage 66 there in Balverde and uh, Converse at 68 degrees over there at Randolph. And so temperatures are up a little bit compared to yesterday and also the humidity. The dew points are up slightly compared to yesterday and we do have a whole bunch of mold out there. Now it's probably going to be dropping down when the updated comes out later on today, but yesterday that was one of the highest readings. And if memory serves me correctly, that was that's the highest reading of mold we've seen around here so far this year. Pigweed is low, and throughout the rest of today, like I said, if you like yesterday, you like today. It's just a continuation of that. Upper 80s, lots of sunshine around here. Big question: Will we touch 90 as we uh, finish out the month? Well, not as we finish out the month of May, I should say, but as we start June, are we going to be hitting 90? And we'll talk, talk about those rain chances, and I'll learn how to talk. We'll talk about those rain chances coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Less than two weeks ago, this was the scene outside a local bar. One person was killed. Three others hurt after someone opened fire. This was at the Pravat Social Club on UTSA Boulevard near Vance Jackson. Now police have arrested 34 year old Noah James Patterson. He's charged with homicide and three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Police say surveillance footage helped them find him. They say May 18, two groups of people were fighting in the parking lot outside of the club. And that's when police say Patterson pulled out a gun and shot another man in the stomach. He later died. And have you seen this woman? San Antonio police are looking for 64 year old Carol Dennis. She's been missing since April 9th. She's about five foot seven, has brown hair and brown eyes. If you know anything that can help find her, you are asked to call police. This morning, there's growing anger in Davenport, Iowa, in the aftermath of that apartment building collapse. Officials say at least five people tied to that building are missing and two are believed to be inside. And as ABC's Rihanna and Ali reports, the building's demolition is on hold amid concerns another collapse is imminent. This morning, authorities fear a partially collapsed apartment building in Iowa could come crashing down at any moment as family members demand to know why the city cleared the building for demolition, even with some tenants still unaccounted for. Officials plan to bring down the building yesterday morning, saying search with dogs, drones and thermal imaging showed no signs of life. I have no uh, no known individuals are trapped in that facility. But just before the demolition was set to begin, Lisa Brooks appeared at a fourth floor window. Rescuers then pulled Brooks to safety more than 24 hours after the collapse. In a new interview, her great granddaughter says Brooks was hiding in an apparent attempt to stay safe from the collapsing building. I was just so afraid that I was going to die and don't see my kids. My grandkids. And why wasn't she found earlier? I am totally transparent with you. I do not know. Now city officials are looking at how to safely conduct another search. We're very sympathetic to the possibility that there's two people, that there's two people still left inside. Ryan Hitchcock's family says it is unlikely he survived the collapse. Ryan wouldn't want anyone else to put their lives at risk. 
to unfortunately somebody who <laughs> probably has not survived. And Brandon Colvin's family also believes he is still in the building, saying his apartment is now visible from the street. And up there where you see those clothes hanging neatly, that was his apartment. Knowing that the city was considering demolishing this as early as today. It's like burying them. Rihanna Alley, ABC News, New York. The head of U.S. Border Patrol is retiring in June after more than 30 years on the job. U.S. Border Patrol Chief, Chief Raul Ortiz stepping down after one of the busiest years in the history of the agency. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas made the announcement last night. Mayorkas thanked Ortiz for his steady leadership and the operational expertise he exhibited over his 32 years of service. It's not clear yet who will replace him. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff have identified an object presumed to be part of the failed North Korean space vehicle that launched today. The object was spotted in the Yellow Sea some 200 kilometers west of South Korea. North Korean state media reported that the country's space agency had launched a planned military reconnaissance satellite earlier in the day. The launch failed, however, when the new satellite vehicle rocket crashed into the ocean. After more than 50 years, the body of an unknown woman who was found in a trunk in a field in St. Petersburg, Florida, has finally been identified. Police say Sylvia June Atherton, a 41-year-old mother of five from Arizona, was the woman whose body was discovered in a wooden trunk 53 years ago on Halloween. The case, the case rather quickly gained notoriety with the victim being dubbed the trunk lady and was featured in various television shows, articles and cold case conferences. While the identification of Atherton marks a significant milestone, investigators still have not identified a suspect in her murder. Right now, 436, 68 degrees. Coming up next, we are checking in on Victor Wimbanyama and how the likely overall number one NBA draft pick is playing in the LNB Pro of Finals overseas. And we have a situation that Stephen is already tracking right now this morning. Uh, right now it's happening at westbound 90 as ours and more. There was a vehicle fire and at last check two lanes were blocked. Let's look out there with live cam fog in some areas. This shot looks OK. 68 degrees, a nice morning and looking to nice temperatures comparatively to last year. We're going to check in with Mike later on. Morning Sports, Victor Wimbeyama and the Metropolitans 92. One win away from the LMB Pro A Finals after beating Osville 86-83 in Game 2 of the semis yesterday. They lead that best of five series two games to none. Wimby, the likely overall number one NBA draft pick, played 35 minutes, scored 13 points with 10 rebounds, two assists, and one block shot. Game 3 of the LNB Pro A semifinals is Friday at 1.30 p.m. local time. In the NBA Eastern Conference Finals, Heat finally knocked out the Celtics 103-84, winning the series 4-3. Now they face the Nuggets in the NBA Finals, and Denver hasn't played ball in nine days after sweeping the Lakers in the West Finals. They play fearless, they play uh, disciplined, uh, they're well coached, um, and have some guys that have been there before, and have some guys that have uh, chips on their shoulder. So, um, you know, we're not... I'm not looking at the, the seating or, or the story around it. You know, this is a, a very talented um, basketball team, a professional basketball team, and um, all those guys over there got game. So we respect it. Nuggets will host the Heat Thursday night, 730, game one of the NBA Finals live right here on KSAT. In high school softball, Class 1A state semifinals, Tejanis beat Neches 3-2 yesterday, advancing to the 1A state final later this afternoon. They will face Hermley in a rematch of last year's title game. And in Texas League action, Mission's taking on the Frisco Rough Riders this week. They're off to a good start. San Antonio wins in Frisco last night, a score 8-2. The series continues tonight. All right, congrats. Time now, 442 and 68 degrees for now. Texas has some of the highest homeowner's insurance costs. And up next, we're going to tell you why you can expect your premium to jump again this year. And one tool that can help you. Have you ever heard of skip lagging? That's when you book a flight with a layover in the city that is the intended destination. Up next, we'll see if you can really save money by doing that and how you can actually get in trouble for doing it. 
Welcome back. It's 445. There is a new travel trend gaining popularity. It's called skip lagging, which is the process of booking a flight with a layover in a city that is the intended destination. But can it really save you money? ABC's Rihanna Nally has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an important reality check on the travel trend gaining steam online. It's called skip lagging. If you get caught, you could get in a lot of trouble. Here's how it works. Let's say a nonstop flight from New York to L.A. is 500 bucks, but a flight to Seattle with a layover in L.A. is 300. Some travelers are skipping that second flight altogether and just staying in L.A., Though passengers might be excited at the prospect of saving money, experts warn GMA there are potentially huge consequences. Skip lagging is a very risky bet. They do reserve the right to go after you for more money. They could cancel your frequent flyer account. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on the potential risks, but also hear from the people behind the skip lagging movement who say the money saved is well worth it. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. Right now, the price of homeowners insurance is through the roof, and you can expect it to go even higher this year. 12 Your Tides, Marilyn Morris looks at why and what you can do to trim that bill. When Jess Wright moved from an apartment to this house, she added more space and homeowner's insurance. Top reasons, I'm thinking a tree falls on my house. Somebody gets injured, God forbid. Fire, major storm damage, that kind of stuff. Stuff happens, like damaging hailstorms and tornadoes. Extreme weather is one reason Texas has some of the highest homeowners insurance costs. Rates rose nearly 11% last year, according to the state. That's partly because home values are up, so are the costs of materials to repair them. And you can expect your premiums to jump again this year. So now is the time to shop around, comparing the prices and coverage of several companies. You do get a loyalty benefit for sticking around with companies, but it's not as great as the benefit from getting an overall lower price from shopping around. This website, helpinsure.com, is one tool that can help you do that. Get all of the discounts you can. The biggie is bundling. Buying your homeowners and car insurance from the same company can save you up to 30%. Bundle your boat or bike, too. Next, raise your deductible. Upping a $500 deductible to $1,000 can shave your premium by 25%. Report home improvements if you replace hold plumbing and security cameras or install leak detectors. Let your agent know. You may trim 2 to 6% for each item. But remember, cheaper isn't always better. You want good service. Two that consistently land in the top tier of Consumer Reports ratings, Amica and USAA. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick check of the roads with Transguide looking over at I-10 at Medical. Kind of looks like a stalled vehicle in this shot. Earlier we had some problems um, on Highway 90 westbound, uh, but we're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos in the next half hour. He just texted us oh, said that did? fire is clear. Oh, okay, very good. Yes, it is. So that it's all gone. Question. Yes. Okay, okay. riddle me this, Batman. The whole skip lagging thing? Yes. What never makes sense is when you want to go from here to there, right. long distance and it costs less than going from here to there. But to get there, you gotta go from here to there. Oh yeah. yeah through this stop. <laughs> you have to, going right here costs more than going all the way, but stopping through there. Steph and I haven't run an airline in 20 years. We don't know these things. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, that just, things have it, changed. It yeah. never ceases to, to frustrate me. I mean, I, it's like, it, why not hop off right I there? Understand. It is, I understand. Yeah. It's, I don't, I don't know. Didn't get that answer to your question answered. But, I'm sorry, okay. Mike. <laughs> anyway, yesterday, sunset was absolutely spectacular. Yes, it does look like a painting. And if you want to see some more beautiful paintings by Mother Nature, uh, just look off to the east right around, oh, starting about eh, a little before 6 o'clock this morning when we start to see that glow of the morning sunrise. And sun's going to be coming up about 6.30 in just a couple of hours there. And then the sunset tonight is going to be beautiful as well. All right, here we are looking over there at 10 at 410. And there's downtown in the distance. Obviously, no visibility problems here. And by the way, we do have a little bit more humidity. You'll notice it when you step outside. Not up a ton, but up 
two, three, four, five, six degrees, 10 degrees higher humidity or dew point temperatures higher. So that much more moisture in the atmosphere over there in Kerrville. And that's not really going to be changing all that much. Now we will see a slight drop in the afternoon, as is usually the case. We go through that 24 hour cycle, comes back up somewhat tomorrow morning, and then we do it again on Thursday. But we're not going to be seeing any big drops in the humidity at all. So we're still sticking with this whole theme of very consistent temperatures all the way through and consistent humidity levels all the way through basically the rest of the week and going into the first part of next week. So this morning, we have got a lot of uh, sunshine around here and we're going to make it up to 82 degrees already at noon. Couple of clouds here and there and then 88 high temperature again, pretty much a cut and paste from today or from yesterday into today and pretty much do the same thing tomorrow. Here's one of the reasons for all this beautiful weather. This is the water vapor imagery and when you get the really, really dark shade of gray like this, that means there's hardly anything as far as any moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. And so that's why we're going to have the beautiful blue skies again, maybe a, a couple of clouds here or there. All right, let's jump into the future and Friday we will see a few more clouds around the area. Despite that, though, we will hit 90. Now, once we get into tomorrow, the normal high gets up to 91 degrees, so we're still just shy of normal. Granted, we are very hot, but it's seasonably hot, but nothing just spiking or way off the charts going into Saturday. Now this particular model does not have any rain around on Saturday morning. Another one does. However, this one got to watch out for it again. Broad brush. So a few days off, but for a uh, system to try and form up Saturday night to move across the area. And then Sunday we have a better chance for just some uh, showers around. Same thing Monday and same thing going into Tuesday. So just as we start to dry out a little bit and we start to get a little bit warmer, then clouds move back in here. Rain chances move back on in. So today, tomorrow, just about identical. A couple more clouds around on Friday. We'll make it up to 90. Same thing on Saturday. We're up to 90. Difference being a couple of showers on Saturday. Slightly better chance of rain than Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Hi, Steph. Hi, Steph. How are you? I like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. So you're walking across the seven day. <laughs> anyway. That's my head. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so good looking forecast. Once again, nothing too extreme. It's like still. a ring doorbell. We can keep track of Steph wherever she's at in the building. Because oh, of the like cameras. It. Yeah. Put, it, put a little Apple tag on her. And we'll, you know, oh, the air tag? <laughs> yeah, sure. We've already done that. 452, 68 degrees. Summer movie season is underway, and June is shaping up to be a very busy month for movie fans. Up next, we're going to check out the top blockbuster movies coming to a theater near you. Coming to a TV screen near you are lottery numbers. Pick 3, 886, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 6482, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 4, 16, 17, 21, 30. And your Mega Millions, 13, 16, 40, 64, 68. Mega Ball 21, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. Who do you think you are? Really? June at the movies kicks off when Spider Man Across the Spider Verse swings into theaters Friday. For centuries, our kind has stayed hidden on Earth. But not anymore, as the Maximals are ready for their robotic close-ups in Transformers Rise of the Beasts. The more than meets the eye machines stomp into theaters June 9th. Oh my god! Flash! No. Hi. I love you! The Scarlet Speedster gets a big screen adventure in The Flash. The long-awaited superhero flick features not one, but two Batmen and speeds into theaters June 16th. Junior stargazers and space cadets. Each year we celebrate Asteroid Day, commemorating September 23rd, 3007 BC, when the arid plains meteorite made Earth impact. Wes Anderson's Asteroid City premiered at the Cannes Film Festival in May, opening in limited release June 16th, and making impact with theaters across the U.S. June 23rd. I'm retiring. Well, in that case, what are we drinking? Same for the goddaughter. Dad told me you found something on a train during the war. A dial that could change the course of history. The man in the hat is back as Harrison Ford returns in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. The fifth Indiana Jones big screen adventure arrives in theaters June 30th. Getting reserved seats in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. That movie, The Flash, I feel like that's another Top Gun Maverick. And I 
it just feels like for some reason they've had it ready two or three years and it's just now Got coming delayed out. delayed and delayed. Maybe all the characters I know. coming together. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. I know how they had some uh, main star issues. 457, 68 degrees. Next Monday is when the Treasury Department says the U.S. would run short of money to pay its debts. Up next, what President Biden and Speaker Kevin McCarthy had to do to make sure that does not happen. Plus a sentence for a San Antonio man convicted of speeding and blowing right past a stop sign, hitting and killing a 61-year-old man. And a quick look at the roads with Transguide looking over at I-10 again at Medical. It appears to be a stalled vehicle, but I'm going to get all the details with Stephen Cavazos. He's in the studio after the break. Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. One hurdle down and now another to go for the debt ceiling deal. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington with the bipartisan backlash the measure is now facing hours before a House floor vote. And let's look out there with a live cam looking pretty good at 68 degrees. Another nice morning before things warm up again. We're going to be checking in with Mike pretty soon. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, May 31st. Thanks for joining us. Uh, possibility of rain, but right now it looks nice. Yeah, not a bad morning overall. 68 degrees out at the airport. Mike Ostrage, how bad is the fog and where is it concentrated right now? Okay, what's interesting is uh, last half hour, New Braunfels had a lot of thick fog. Okay, well, you see what the visibility is now. So, and we always say it goes back and forth. So it just goes from one extreme to the other. That's coming up in just a moment. And Steph had mentioned about rain chances. Yeah, not for a few days, though. Later on in the forecast, we do have another shot at some rain. Right now, 69 degrees. No uh, wind to speak of. And the dew point and the air temperature are really close together. Those two uh, numbers there in that bottom one. And so that's why we have 93% humidity out there. And with all that extra humidity, we got a lot of clear skies. That's some the ingredients reason why we get some fog going on 88 high temperature today just like where we were yesterday with plenty of sunshine out there so make sure you find some shade the aquifer yesterday went up one tenth of a foot and the allergens a lot of mold hopefully that goes down when the updated count comes out and a little bit of fog so okay check out the fog right now or the lack thereof again new braunfels 10 miles visibility it was just down to a half mile, quarter mile within the past half hour. A hint of fog there at Port SA. So just an example that all of a sudden you can get a lot of fog. All of a sudden it can be sort of cleared on out. So we'll keep watching this over the next few hours around here. So mostly uh, sunny today, upper 80s. Same thing tomorrow, just like what we had yesterday. And then we get into Friday. A couple extra clouds around here. We are going to be hitting 90. Of course, upper 80s in your backyard, it may be touching 90 degrees. And then Saturday, the only difference between that and Friday, you know, a couple more clouds, but one or two showers, maybe in the morning, but then in the evening hours, we're going to have to watch a potential one of those storm clusters trying to slide on through here. Once again, 90 on Saturday, then a slightly better chance for just a couple of showers here and there on Sunday as well as Monday. That in turn is also going to hold temperatures down. So we'll be down in the mid 80s, back down to about five degrees below normal for a high temperature going into or finishing up the weekend going into the first part of next week. Once again, this fantastic weather pattern basically continues. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. If we had all those lights and yeah. everything going on. Well, you know what? That's cleared out, so that's great news, right, Mike? But as we get a look around town, there are a few more folks out there. So let's get a quick look, show you what you can expect for this Wednesday morning drive. There's 35 at San Marcos, so you really don't see a lot of folks out there this early in the morning in the north and southbound lanes. There at the upper level at 35 and Main, you could see that we do have a few more folks out there getting the commute going this early in the morning. But we did have a vehicle fire that was reported right here along US 90 westbound at Zazmora, and really that was a big issue of the morning. Looks like that is cleared out and we really didn't even see any delay in the westbound lanes if you were heading out of town, but it did. We did at least see two lanes that were blocked for a little while there. So first responders have cleared that out. Let's hope everyone else is doing OK. Quick look at some of these travel times. If you're heading into San Antonio this early in the morning, it should be about a 28 minute drive. Still pleasant from Pleasanton along 37 northbound 27 minutes. If you're heading along US 90 eastbound from Castroville and that arrival from Lytle should take you about 16 minutes along I 35 northbound. But let's get one last look around town. There's 281 at Acoma. A very uh, busy morning there. You can see a lot more folks in the north and southbound lanes, but we'll keep a close eye on things and have an update on construction planned for the month of June. Can't believe we're already saying that that'll be coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Steph. Thank you, Stephen.
Forgiveness from a son, but not without an eight-year prison sentence for a San Antonio man. Daniel Campa was sentenced yesterday after being charged with manslaughter for striking and killing a motorcyclist in 2021. Campa had been speeding and blew past a stop sign, hitting and killing 61-year-old Romero Maldonado at a North Park and North Loop Rose. At the sentencing, Campa apologized to the victim's family. Maldonado's son forgave Campa and said he would pray for him. But I want to tell you that I forgive you with everything that is in me, man, because I'm not going to live my life hating you, hating somebody that took something so valuable to me, man. You know, it's hard for me to say that, bro, because I, the previous me would have done, said sorry, bro. You know, I would have came looking for you, but I'm not going to do it. Why? Because I love my, my brothers in Christ, man, and I'm going to tell you right now, God's the only way you're going to get through this, bro. You never know what miracles he's going to do for you if you allow him in your heart. And that's all I'm going to pray is that you get God in your heart because you need him, bro, just like everyone else. Campa must serve half of his sentence before he is eligible for parole. The bipartisan deal to raise the debt ceiling is moving forward and people who rely on government aid for food would be affected. Right now, those receiving help from the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or better known as SNAP, who are considered able-bodied, do not have children, and are 18 to 49, are required to work or participate in a training program for at least 80 hours a month to receive extended benefits. Under the debt ceiling agreement, the rule would gradually bring the maximum to 54 by 2025 and it would expire in 2030. San Antonio Food Bank CEO Eric Cooper says stricter rules could force some SNAP recipients to turn to other resources like the food bank. If they cut SNAP a little bit, it could mean that the food bank would have to double in size. And right now with the amount of food that I have, I can't do that. Now, as of April, nearly 122,000 people in Bear County received SNAP benefits. Again, the changes are still just a proposal. As for the food bank here, they say regardless of what happens, food costs and demand are still an issue. Taking a live look at the nation's capital on this Wednesday morning after narrowly passing a House committee vote, the debt ceiling deal still on track for a crucial floor vote later today. However, some hardline Republicans and progressive Democrats alike are blasting that bill. The president and the House Speaker are now rallying their parties to back it. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, the bill's next test is expected tonight. With the threat of default looming and hours before the debt limit deal brokered by the president and House Speaker faces a pivotal vote. Many progressives, including me, lean no. Not one Republican should vote for this deal. Yes. Not one. Many progressive Democrats and conservative Republicans are coming out against the deal, each accusing their leadership of making too many concessions. Still, the Republican-led House Rules Committee cleared the measure for a floor vote. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The bill calls for suspending the debt ceiling until January 2025, clawing back $30 billion in COVID relief, rescinding $20 billion in IRS funding, ending the federal student loan repayments freeze in August and adding new work requirements for some Americans on food assistance. The White House and House Republican leaders now sprinting to stir up support. Our senior team made individual calls to all House Democratic leadership. Members from all across the conference shared their support for this important bill. In the Senate, though top leaders Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell are backing the deal, there are breaks in the ranks. I have a lot of concerns about this agreement. It's about taking food away from people who are hungry. I think the Biden-McCarthy debt deal is a disaster for the country. A final vote is expected later tonight. The bill needs 218 votes to pass, so look for the White House and congressional Republican leaders alike to continue whipping up votes until the last minute. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Here in Texas, lawmakers in Austin put pet safety on this year's legislative agenda, and so several pet bills are awaiting the governor's final signature. Senate Bill 876 would mandate those who have five female dogs used for breeding to have a state license. Now, House Bill 3660 would protect agencies and good Samaritans who use the trap neuter release programs to help control the feral cat population. And House Bill 2026 looks to tackle the veterinarian shortage in rural communities. It's pretty important when you talk about those rural areas that can't get a veterinarian and they very much need one either for livestock and or pet population. So really critical, uh, especially in veterinary shortages. It's even harder to get a veterinarian in the rural areas compared to urban and suburban. 
And finally, a bill that would keep pets away from people who have been convicted of animal cruelty takes effect in September. 509, 68 degrees. Just ahead on GMSA, why some top AI researchers and CEOs are warning that artificial intelligence could lead to human extinction. It is life-saving training. Up next, how a local student is taking it to the next level. Why he says it's more important than ever. And let's look out there with live cam. Another nice morning out there, 68 degrees. Things will warm up again, but we're going to be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of the week. Across Texas, students are learning a life-saving technique called Stop the Bleed. One Northside ISD junior took the training to the next level and made it his focus for a project to help others. Hector Frausto took the training this year as a junior as part of an independent study mentorship program with San Antonio Metro Health. And as part of his project, Frausto made pre-training videos for students taking Stop the Bleed courses. He says it's vital more people in general public know what to do should the worst happen because those first few minutes in a traumatic bleeding incident could mean the difference between life and death. Hopefully you have at least one or two people in that classroom that can be like, okay, give me someone sure, give me a towel, like, let's start putting pressure because you will end up saving that person's life. Northside ISD recently held a Stop the Bleed training event for students and staff to get certified. Frosto says his goal is to have more training courses both in the fall and in the spring of the next school year. 514, 68 degrees. Up next, how Twitter says it is expanding its fact checking, checking program. And Amazon discontinuing celebrity voices for its digital assistant will tell you why. Now you can get a refund if you bought one. I used to pre rinse dishes because my old detergent didn't actually get them clean. But new Cascade Platinum Plus has me doing dishes differently. Scrub, soak, nope. I just scrape, load. And I'm done. Only Platinum Plus is bigger, with double the Dawn grease fighting power and double the scrubbing power. So you can load this and get this. I'm not the type to break the dish rules. Or am I? Scrape, load, done. New Cascade Platinum Plus. Dare to dish differently. With Allegra, allergies don't hold us back. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. And unlike Zyrtec, it won't make us drowsy. So you can live your greatness. And Allegra Hives works from the inside to relieve itching and reduce hives for 24 hours. Stanley Seamer is proud to clean over a million homes across America every year. With custom-made vans and cleaning equipment, our professional cleaning technicians have the knowledge and skills to get your home cleaner and healthier. Get the best for your home. Schedule a cleaning with your local Stanley Steamer today. In today's Tech Bites, the world's top AI experts are now warning of human extinction. 350 people, including CEOs, signed a new public statement expressing concern that artificial intelligence could wipe out humanity if it gets into the wrong hands. They say mitigating the risk should be a global priority. Twitter is expanding its fact-checking program to include images. The change was sparked by a recent viral and fake post claiming to show an explosion near the Pentagon. The company says users will be able to put the images or the tweet itself in context. And finally, Amazon is getting rid of all of its Alexa-enabled celebrity voices. Amazon says those who paid to have the voices of Samuel L. Jackson, Shaq, or Melissa McCarthy can get a refund upon request. Jackson's voice will stop working next week. Shaq and McCarthy in September. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 518. Okay. Well, we saw that stall vehicle at Tenant Medical. You see those flashing lights mm -hmm. out there? That's actually good news. That means a Texas Hero truck has arrived on the scene working to help that driver out. So just be on the lookout. That is off on the shoulder lane. Uh, looks like this is going I-10 eastbound. So if you are heading into the downtown area along I-10, you will likely see that. So just make sure to move over or slow down. Always the best thing to do. And you can see again that Texas Hero truck is out there on the scene. Uh, this is a near medical drive as you just saw from that trans guide camera. It's not really impacting traffic because it is is very early in the morning, but just make sure to watch out and check your vehicles before you get your morning commute rolling. Now the wide look at the map really shows a quiet start here as we get closer to 530, but be on the lookout. We have plenty of construction taking place. Although May is wrapping up, we have a lot to look forward to in the month of June. A traffic switch will take place here along Loop 1604 in the north central side of San Antonio. This actually starts tomorrow night and should wrap on Friday, June 2nd, so it's pretty quick. Nine in the evening to five in the morning. What we'll see out there are alternating lane closures northbound at Blank.
Blanco Road and the Loop 1604 intersection. But plan your commute ahead of time. You can scan this QR code. There is a list of all the closures that are taking place throughout the month of June, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more to look forward to this summer. We'll have a full list on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. Mike. Thank you very much, sir. All right, beautiful picture from yesterday, and this one says unique cloud formation early morning and it looks like just some low for just from this picture, just some low uh, stratus clouds out there. Beautiful sunshine. We are going to see a gorgeous sunrise this morning because we don't have much of anything as far as any clouds out there. A lot of clear skies when I walked outside and heading off to work this morning. As you can see traffic over there at 410 by the airports moving along very well. Temperatures are up a few degrees compared to this time yesterday. Um, of course, yesterday we had some of that rain cooled air still sticking around here and we've got 70s throughout the rest of the morning. A lot of sunshine, one or two clouds here and there. Enough humidity to where you're going to notice it. Noon 82 and then we top off 88 degrees. Still not quite up to the actual normal high temperature of 90. And I, again, no complaints. I keep saying that. All right, we've got to jump ahead. We do have some rain chances again. We've, you know, obviously earlier a couple of days ago, we had some of that rain on Memorial Day and then got the drying period. But we're going to be seeing a couple of more showers move back in here with some subtle changes to the overall pattern again by the weekend. So Saturday, Friday, a couple of more clouds. Saturday, this particular model, there's another one, like I said, that has a couple of showers Saturday, but this one wants to get a nighttime uh, complex of storms trying to develop Saturday night. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Those can be some uh, hefty rain producers that would then translate into Sunday. A couple of showers hanging around here. Actually, a better chance of rain Sunday and then going into Monday and not raining everywhere. Again, broad brush with this long range computer model, but at least those rain chances do exist. Here's what's going on in the upper level winds. Now we've got this sort of ridge, not a real big one, but that's sitting on top of us, which means no rain around here. That's going to be the situation for the next couple of days tomorrow through Thursday. Then we get into Friday. That high starts to ease just a little bit and by Saturday and again, this is not not a big like in your face type situation, but just subtle little little nuances here coming on through little disturbances. And that's why we're going to be seeing some of those rain chances, maybe late Saturday. But again, especially on Sunday, the high is pretty much out of the picture. And again, we've got the things opened up for rain chances. We're going to be getting into a little bit of a northwesterly flow again. You know what that was? That was the, the case on Monday when we had those uh, showers and storms that popped up. This configuration is going to be sticking around in through first to even middle portion of next week. So nothing really, uh, you know, no low sitting on top of us, but nothing to keep us too hot and dry. So we will have some of those showers around here, even going into the middle part of next week. Uh, upper 80s the next couple of days. We will hit 90 Friday, Saturday. Still not quite up to par because normal high gets up to 91. And then that rain chance moves back in here. A couple of them uh, on Saturday, but uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Just in time. Mm -hmm. I heard uh, locusts for the first time the other oh, really? day. The summer drone or chirp of those mm -hmm. locusts. Yep, so just a matter of time, right? Just, oh, yeah. just to welcome it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Since we don't have rain today, we are going to finish up May. Actually, slightly below normal by couple of tenths of an inch, but going back to for the spring, going back to the first of March meteorological spring, well above normal rain. We've had about 10, 10 plus inches of rain since the first wow. of uh, March around here. More than we had all of last year. Just yeah, I mean, just for that three month period mm -hmm. yeah, for the wow. year. Yes, we've had more than last year. For sure. 523, 68 degrees. Vote for me. Just please vote for me. Shiv, vote for me. No. Up next on GMSA, the succession finale sets a viewership series high, plus the Dungeons and Dragons directors talk about forming their team. A lot of people saw the Roy siblings go down in flames on succession. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Vote for me. Just please vote for me. Shiv, vote for me. No. But audiences voted yes. The Succession series finale Sunday night drew 2.9 million viewers on Max and linear telecasts. That's a record for the Emmy-winning show. They give us a fighting chance. We're gonna need strength. You got this, right? I know you don't. We also need courage. Back to school 
Magic. And you. The directors of Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves say they made sure they had the right team assembled before filming began. When they arrived in Belfast, uh, before we started shooting, we played a three-hour Dungeons and Dragons game with the cast. So that gave them a real kind of uh, sense of what it is and the, the collaboration that's required when you play. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves is now out on 4K Ultra HD, Blu-ray, and DVD. Rolling for Initiative in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 68 degrees. The debt limit deal is heading toward a crucial U.S. House vote today. Just ahead, how President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy plan to avert blowback from dissenting Republicans and Democrats. And also coming up, ready for a new pet. Up next, we're checking with Animal Defense League to learn more about this precious pup. And we'll do this. We're teasing Dukes of Hazard style. Luke and Bo Duke were not on board this car that launched into the air off the back of a tow truck. However, we're still going to tell you what happened after the break. Making headlines this morning, President Biden and Speaker McCarthy reach a compromise on a debt ceiling deal, but some lawmakers are still not convinced. Unless something changes on the bill. Uh, absolutely, I'm triple motive. No, I and many other progressives lean no. Up next, why the deal between the president and the speaker is likely to pass anyway. And let's look out there with live cam. Not in this shot, but fog in some areas this morning. Looking pretty good at 68 degrees. Chances of rain later in the week, but for the next few days, looking pretty good. Good morning to you, and hey there, team. We made it to midweek. It is uh, Wednesday, the 31st. Yes, we, we <laughs> made it indeed, and, um, you know, not bad compared to last year. Oh, no, not at all. And it's funny looking at uh, some of the, the numbers coming up here over the next few days. Last year, we were setting records. It was, you know, 102, 103, 104 mm. for a long streak. Our electric bills were already oh, yeah. spiking, weren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was telling somebody about my electric bills last summer, which were I don't even want to think about it. Oh, <laughs> I still have nightmares about that. Anyway, <laughs> look outside right now and got a lot of clear skies out there. Temperature right now stands at 69 degrees, two points at 67. So these two numbers are really close together and no wind that kind of sets the stage for a little bit of fog and it looks like uh, there's the planet Jupiter believe right there. All right, Bernie is now starting to show a hint of fog. Of course, New Braunfels hour ago was down a quarter mile and now nothing. Eight miles visibility of Port SA. So again, just these hints of fog. Temperatures are once again actually a few degrees below normal. 63 Bernie stage, 68 at Divine and Randolph at 67 degrees. Then you factor in the humidity, the dew point temperatures, and again, they're running neck and neck. So that's why the the threat is there for some fog. Temperatures are going to kind of stay steady the next couple of hours and then once that sun comes up, warm up quickly. We will already be up to 82 at noon and plenty of sunshine around the area. Just a pretty much repeat of yesterday with 88 for a high temperature. Take this cut and paste again tomorrow. Same situation. A couple of more clouds on Friday and we'll kind of bump it up a notch or two with temperatures. Then we do have some rain chances coming on in here, so that's going to bump it back down as far as temperatures once we get into the latter part of the weekend and the first part of next week. We'll talk about those rain chances in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, any big things out there? Well, the Tower of the Americas, Mike, let's ah. get a quick look here. Really neat shot from our friends over at Transguide. Um, nothing is going on out there. I was just checking some of the reports, but this is a fantastic view from our friends over there, so thank you for that shot. You can see the north and southbound lanes. Traffic is moving pretty good for a lot of folks this early in the morning. And again, a fantastic shot there when you have the Tower of the Americas in the background. Let's give you a look at the map. We did have some problems reported a little bit earlier. Those have since cleared out. And the big topic of the morning will be some of the construction that could cause some delays for you. More on that a little bit later on because we're not really seeing any impacts with people coming into town. I-10 westbound still in the green from Seguin with 29 minutes to the Alamo City. About 33 minutes along 87 northbound heading in from Lavernia and for our friends down in Floresville should be about a 28 minute drive time. But let's get it back to this great shot here at 37 at the Alamo Dome where you can just see traffic along the north and southbound lanes is moving along without any trouble. We'll continue to watch the roads closely and I'll have an update on some of those road closures coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark stuff.
Thank you, sir. We have some late breaking news from just north of downtown. San Antonio police are conducting a search for a shooter. That's right. This is happening in the area near San Pedro Avenue and I-35. Our Katrina Weber is one block over on Jackson Street. Katrina, we understand this began with a robbery. Well, that's right. It happened right here uh, within this roped off area. This is Jackson near Euclid Street. Police say the victim was walking here on his way home from a convenience store when he was approached by someone with a gun who tried to rob him. Uh, he said he didn't have anything to give, and that is when the shooter took aim at him, wounding him in his uh, upper left arm, according to police. Now, they do have a lot of activity going on in this area. We see officers, officers with flashlights going around uh, searching for evidence, searching for that shooter and in this neighborhood. We saw them enter a vacant building and they're walking around all in this area. They do have this area roped off and earlier we saw them uh, with their dogs and also the helicopter in the air searching for that gunman. So far they have not found anyone. The victim was rushed to a hospital and police say he is in a serious condition, possibly critical condition as a result of that gunshot wound that he suffered right back here. Reporting live just north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katrina, thank you very much. We have some audio issues to work out, but uh, we'll help to catch her a little bit later on in the newscast. Well, have you ever been nervous about being pulled over because you were alone or it was dark outside or maybe even you were in a dangerous neighborhood? Well, the San Antonio NAACP branch recently partnered with the Bear County Sheriff's Office to raise awareness of what you should do if stopped by an officer. Alyssa Cole met with both organizations to find out what brought on this partnership and how it can benefit you on the roadways. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, you all. I'm standing outside of the Barber Jordan Community Center because this is where I sat down with the NAACP San Antonio branch president, Dr. Gregory Hudsmith, discussing how overwhelming or how frightening it could be getting pulled over for many people across the country and especially, of course, here in Texas. And with the summer underway, more people will be on the roads, including more teenagers seeing that school is out. An effort to reduce risk of harmful, negative or traumatic encounters with officers for all people, especially people of color. Members of the NAACP got together with the Bear County Sheriff's Office to create a video informing people on what you should do and what you should not do when being pulled over by a law enforcement officer. Here's a little clip of what that informative video looks like. Take a look. If you're in an area that is dark, you can turn on your hazards and drive to an area that is well lit, such as a gas station. Once you've stopped, Always roll your windows down to ensure no views are obstructed for the law enforcement officer. If you have a weapon in your vehicle, let the law enforcement officer know that you have a weapon and where it is located, but never reach for it. Now, the purpose of sharing these tips is to create a safe environment for both the driver and the officer. What we want to do is ensure that we have this open line of communication with law enforcement here in San Antonio, Bear County, and so that our young people will know what to do and what not to do, because it's much easier for us to deal with these issues before they occur than after they occur. Now, another great tip to take away, something I even learned myself, if you are nervous or you are just too frightened when an officer pulls you over, it is lawful to call 911 and have them on speakerphone just to be sure that that officer, of course, is a real legitimate officer or just to, just to practice safe protection made, um, measures, excuse me. Now, if you are interested in seeing this full video, it will be posted on our website later at kset.com. All you have to do is visit our website and it will be posted there shortly. Reporting outside of the Barbara Jordan Community Center, Alyssa Cole, KSET 12 News. Taking a live look at the nation's capital this morning at 638 Eastern time, less than a week ago until the nation risks going into default. However, a bill on the debt ceiling is set for a vote today on the House floor. It comes after months of tension between the White House and congressional Republicans on the issue. However, as CNN's Reed Binion reports, time is quickly running out. 
House Republicans just concluded a very productive and respectful conference meeting. House Republican Conference Chair Elise Stefanik speaking on the debt ceiling bill just after it moved past a key hurdle. The bill, the result of a deal between House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and President Joe Biden, cleared the House Rules Committee Tuesday. Members from all across the conference shared their support for this important bill. The bill heads to the House floor Wednesday for debate and a final passage vote. If it passes, it goes to the Senate. But the time frame for getting the bill to President Biden's desk is very tight. The Treasury Department says if the debt ceiling isn't raised by June 5th, the nation will no longer be able to pay all its financial obligations. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle, many of them moderates, appear ready to vote for the deal to avoid default. However, ahead of Tuesday's GOP conference meeting, there were still strong voices opposing the bill on the the Republican side. And you're a firm no. Unless something changes on the bill, absolutely, I'm triple no. And some dissenting voices among Democrats. No, I and many other progressives lean no. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Reed Binion. Republican Florida Governor Ron DeSantis set to begin his first full day of presidential campaigning with a four-stop blitz through the state of Iowa. DeSantis has appearances in Sioux City, Council Bluffs, Pella, and Cedar Rapids today. He's packing in early events to the state whose caucus kicks off the GOP White House primary voting. It's part of a leadoff sprint that will eventually take him across 12 cities across Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina before Saturday. The Food and Drug Administration has issued a warning about approved treatments for diabetes and weight loss. The FDA issued the warning about the compounded versions of the drug, which is sold under popular brand names like Ozempic. Ozempic and Wagavi have been on the FDA's drug shortages list since last year. The FDA says when drug shortages happen, sometimes compounded or mixed versions of the drugs are prepared, but the agency has not reviewed those compounded versions for safety, effectiveness, or quality. Now, the agency advises patients to use the approved drug instead of the compounded versions when available. Well, it looks like a scene straight out of the Dukes of Hazard. You got to see this. Take a look at your screen. A wild video captured the moment a driver hit a tow truck's flatbed and went flying right through the air. You're watching? It happened in South Georgia. There it goes. This body cam video released from the sheriff's office from that crash just last week. In the video, you can see deputies on the side of a traffic incident where a car comes down. One of the lanes doesn't slow down, goes up the back of the flatbed and flips right through the air. Georgia State Highway Patrol confirmed the driver of the crash survived, but with serious injuries. Wow. Time now, 542 and 68 degrees for now. Smooth sailing if you used American as your airline over the Memorial Day travel weekend. Up next, how the airline managed to get through without any canceled flights. Plus, a new recommendation from the Academy of Pediatrics. We'll have that coming up. And outside with live cam on your Wednesday morning, last day of the month, we'll look ahead to June with Mike Osterhage coming up. And welcome back. It is 545 in your morning consumer headlines. American Airlines says it canceled zero flights over Memorial Day weekend. In a statement, it says it made flying operation ranked first for completion. However, its regional carriers canceled 34 flights, but those were mostly due to weather. The positive news follows travel meltdowns at multiple carriers over Christmas and last Memorial Day weekend. U.S. home prices seem to be in recovery mode. The, according to the latest data, U.S. home prices rose slightly in March, 0.4% after seasonal adjustments. It's the second month in a row that prices have increased. February's increase snapped a seven-month streak of month-over-month -month declines. Right now, we're at 546, 68 degrees on your Wednesday morning. And coming up next, the Animal Defense League is here with a fuzzy pet that needs a new home. A little bit big for Nadi to hold. Not to do us hunger. <laughs> Who's this little guy? So this is Smokey. He's a very sweet, sweet boy, six months old, um, and he's a little terrier mix. Okay, short hair, easy to take care of. Pretty calm for six months old too, because there's a lot of dogs in the studio right mm -hmm. now. But he's he's just kind of kind of kicking back, aren't you, huh, buddy? <laughs> yes. But he would make a great walking partner, running partner. As I say, play out in the backyard with the kids, right? Perfect. Perfect. Yes, everybody. you would. What y'all got going on? So uh, we're actually celebrating our 89th birthday. Uh, on the 19th is our actual birthday, but mm -hmm. we're gonna celebrate on the 17th at our Paul Jolly location. So we'll have pup cups, goodies, vendors, and music. So. 
hopefully people can come out and enjoy. Go out and celebrate and of course they can always use gifts for their birthday such <laughs> as donations, such as all the pet supplies, you've got an Amazon uh, wish, wish list, list out there and fosters and volunteers mm -hmm. are always welcome. So if you'd like more information about the big birthday celebration and this little guy, Little Smokey as well, head on over to the Animal Defense League, 11300 Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, PetSmart or ADLTexas.org. Thank you, dear. All right, let's get another look at traffic. Things have been moving along just okay here. We get a look around town, 410 North at Ingram. You can see that, uh, yeah, we're not really seeing a lot of people out there, but the commute is getting busy as we get a different view of some of these trans guide cameras. 410 at Babcock is a perfect example of that, and as well as here at McCullough. Uh, but just be on the lookout. We do have a stalled vehicle reported here at 410 eastbound at Morrison Boulevard. Not really causing any issues, but that has really been the trend of the morning. Giving you a wide look now at our map. Not a lot else out there, which is great to say, but we're getting closer to 6 a.m. So we know the roads are going to be a little bit more jam packed as folks get their commute rolling this morning. But as you can see, 281 at Nakoma is not a bad shot. If you have to wake up early right now, you have a view. Great view there at 37 at the Alamo Dome. Uh, but overall, our morning commute has been pretty OK. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. yeah, looks good. All right. So we were just talking about rain mm -hmm. and how much we've had so far this year. So I just uh, looked up some of the numbers there. And this is also taking into account what would be the normal amount of rain that we would get today. So these numbers have come in from uh, yesterday, but month of May, we've had just shy of four inches of rain, about a half inch behind normal, which again is not too bad, but go back to the start of, and this is meteorological spring, which is March, April, May, and we are about to, uh, 0.85 inches above normal. So of course it was much wetter there in March and April, but that's not bad at all. And for the uh, for the year, we've had just shy of 12 inches of rain. We're about an inch behind normal, but of course, look going back to 2022 only had 11 and a half inches of rain. We were already even before we got the, the rain on Monday, which was three tenths of an inch. We were still above what we had all of last year, and then Monday was added to that. And of course, we're going to be adding to that once we get into the primarily the end of the weekend and going to the first part of next week. Cool picture here, special on celestial objects tonight, the sun and the moon. And as you can see, the moon is not quite full. It's going to be full on Sunday and Somebody's got a really good lens on that camera. That is gorgeous. Thank you, Oscar, for that uh, KSAT Connect picture. All right, are we starting to see my imagination? That's right. Yeah, the glow of the sunrise already. It's going to come up in roughly 40 minutes, 35 minutes. So it's going to be a beautiful sunrise out there. Grab your sunglasses. Temperatures are in the mid and upper 60s right now. Once again, we're actually a little bit below normal and we will warm up very quickly through the 70s this morning. Again, a lot of sunshine yesterday. We started off with completely clear skies, had a couple of clouds in the afternoon. That'll be the situation again today. Again, 88 high temperature out there, so a really good looking forecast. All right, let's go into the future because today, tomorrow, most of Friday, but today and tomorrow, identical and same as yesterday. Then Friday, a couple of extra clouds around here. Uh, still a lot of sunshine and that's going to get us up to 90. So despite the couple of extra clouds, we will be up uh, to 90 degrees. Same thing on Saturday and then Saturday. We're going to watch out for a couple of scattered showers here. Maybe one of these nighttime storm complexes to sort of move across the area. Then we go into Sunday and we will have a slightly better chance for a few scattered showers around the area. And like I said, that trend is going to continue into Monday and Temperatures once again stay right at or a little bit below normal all the way through the rest of the week through the weekend. And even though it's going to be warmer through Saturday, we will have temperatures just uh, getting bumped down to the mid 80s with some better rain chances Sunday and the first of next week. We will be back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA Decision Day. The debt limit deal is heading to a crucial vote in the House in just hours. What we know and what's at stake. Also, the urgent search for those missing people in the Iowa building collapse. Officials are now saying that two people are still trapped inside. And everybody feels like a vacation. And there are some ways that travelers are saving money. It could save you big on airfare, but there's a bit of a risk. So we'll get into all of it. And then only on GMA, Shark Tank star Barbara Corcoran here answering your real estate questions and why she thinks now is a good time to buy a home. It's all coming up on GMA.
And coming up on the next hour of GMSA, the latest in your local news, weather and traffic. Taking a look at Transguide right now. The sun's slowly coming up at 281 and Hildebrand will be right back after this break.